What up guys, Jordan here for Cinecom.net and welcome to a very exciting After Effects tutorial. I'm going to show you guys how to track today inside After Effects and kind of recreate the shot that you've seen in the beginning of this video right here where Jennings is kind of opening this interface and then he has this cool looking radar. Now it is a beginner's tutorial on how to track because once you know how tracking works, you can actually just assign anything to that. So this is really the foundation of, well, kind of making these things. It is, however, recommended that you do know like the very, very basics of After Effects, like importing clips, etc. So if you don't know yet how to do that, I definitely suggest you first watch the video in the description below that gives you an introduction, like a real starting introduction to After Effects. But assuming that you already know how to do that, let's get started with the tracking. And by the way, guys, later down the road in this tutorial, I have an awesome surprise for you guys. So make sure to stay tuned for that. So I have the original shot here as well with Janik without the interface things on his wristband and such. And what I'm going to do here from my project panel is drag this clip into a new composition by dragging it to this icon right here. So we're going to scrub a little bit forward here in this layer to the point where you're just kind of pressing this button here. And at this point, we want to make sure that this display is coming out of that wristband. So we're going to start the tracking from right here. Head over to the menu here on top, select window and click the tracker panel that will open up this thing right here and we can actually select two kinds of tracking in here track camera or track motion the track camera is a more automatic tracking tool it actually works better if it works and that is a little problem that we are running into often if there isn't enough contrast in your shot then the track camera just won't work and then you have to track it manually with the track motion and that is what i'm going to select because most of the time our shots are not always made for the automatic tracking so just click on that track motion and now you will kind of see that we have this tracking point number one. And of course we are going to assign this tracking point to a certain point that we want to track. Well, that's pretty obvious. So we can click on that tracking point and kind of enlarge these two squares as you can see. And the larger that they are, the more accurate that the tracking will be, but also the longer that the tracking will take. So I'm going to scrub a little bit down here on this clip. You can do that by taking the hand tool and I suggest you learn the shortcuts because it is h for that hand key and now you can kind of just script a little bit lower to his wristband and take back the arrow tool here on top or press the v key on your keyboard and just uh, drag that point to this light right here and the reason i'm doing that is because this light has a very big contrast to its surrounding if it would drag this here this tracking point to this knob right here it is just not going to work that well because there is not much contrast after effects is going to need much contrast like this right here and often what people would also do is kind of just draw their own tracking points if there isn't enough data and you can see that as well on these green screen studios where they kind of have these tracking marks but then afterwards, you also have to remove these tracking marks. So that's kind of the downside to it. Just make sure that you have in your recording a clear contrasty point that you can put your tracker on. So the middle square right here is going to say, well, hey, this here is the tracking information. And the outer square is going to say, well, hey, this is the area where that tracking point is in. Then I'm going to take some extra data here around that tracking point to make sure that it will stick there. Now, currently, we are only tracking the position with one tracking point. And we also want to track the rotation information because Jennings is going to like move his wrist kind of up and down. So here on the right side, inside our tracker, we're going to enable the rotation as well. And you can as well enable the scale if, for example, the camera would come closer or further away from Janik, then you also want to track the scale. In this case, it's not, so I'm not going to enable that. Again, you kind of want to enlarge that tracker a tiny bit like so. We'll just scrub a little bit down here and take that second tracker here to the second light here as well. You could take something else like this knob will probably work well too because there's a big contrast between this knob and its surrounding. You know what? Let's go with this one right here. Perhaps make it a little bit larger like that. And once you've got your two tracking points in place, what you then want to do is press here this play button. And you want to keep your eyes at all time on these two tracking marks. Because once that they are going to go off, you want to hit that stop button. And it's already off with the first frame. After Effects must really hate me. So to fix this issue, what you have to do now is go back a couple of frames. And you can do that by holding down your control key. And then pressing the left arrow key on your keyboard. And just do that until where you're tracking point is at its correct position here. What I'm going to do here is maybe decrease the size of that middle tracking point because perhaps this finger here was a little bit in the way. So let's see how it will go now. Press play. And now it's sticking better on that. This looks good. All right. 
make sure that you keep your eyes on the striking points and if anything would go wrong then just uh press stop oops right here it's okay we have to stop it but that's okay because apparently we're already at the ending because at this point right here where he presses the last button on his interface the interface can go away so uh we don't need the rest of that tracking information anymore so that is fine let's now assign this information right here that you can see these all these points to a new layer because that is exactly what you want to do head over to your layer menu here on top select new and say null object and this is actually just a nothing object it's really nothing but we can assign something to it like tracking information with this layer selected then i'm going to hit the return key on my keyboard and rename this to the um wrist band tracking then select your clip again and from the tracker window right here say edit target and you want to make sure that the wristband tracking that we've just created that layer is selected in here press ok and then hit apply and make sure also here that it says apply dimensions x and y always do that press ok and now all of that tracking information as you can see here all these keyframes are now inside that null object so that null object here should stick perfectly on that wristband as you can see over here and that is a great thing now because once we have this in place we can now link anything that we want to this wristband so let's do that we're going to use the rocket stocks interface pack and again you can find a link to that one in the description below the first link and uh, i've got it already imported here inside after effects there are basically tons of science fiction elements that you can use to kind of create your own interfaces and bells and whistles for your next science fiction project and what is also great for the more advanced users is that you can actually get all of these source files as well the after effects project file that they have created this in so you can kind of tweak those things even more but the whole idea of this pack is that you can just drag and drop to create your own sci-fi scene in just several clicks and that's also what we are going to do so i'm going to start with a frame we've got a map right here frames and i'm going to select frame number three right here and you'll see that we have an in a loop and an out and that is actually we have an incoming animation of that frame we have a loop which is just the middle or the standing frame and now we've got an outgoing animation so typically you always want to select the in loop and out animation right here and just drag that here into your composition on top like so here are those three layers i'm going to drag them a little bit more to the right side so that i can actually see them and we are going to start with the in animation here then the loop animation is going to come next so i'm going to drag that next to it and you can actually hold down your shift key on your keyboard so that it will kind of snap to that ending of the first clip let's take that outgoing animation here as well and drag that to here by holding down your shift key as well so now we have the entire animation the framing is coming in like that the framing is there and the framing will go out with this animation now sometimes when your action is not that long you don't need that loop animation and it's probably for this case as well yep so we're just going to use the in and the out animation drag them next to each other and we're going to position them here where Jenik is pressing this button and the tracking will start so that is at this point right here you can also just select that tracking layer right here press the u key on your keyboard to show the keyframes and that way you know when that animation starts so that is right here so i'm going to select these two layers you can do so by holding down your shift key again and dragging them to the right side so that they can start at that point and as for the outgoing animation it has to stop when the tracking is going to stop so that is going to be somewhere right here just drag it a little bit more to the left side like that and now i'm going to trim the incoming animation here from the right side like that hold down your shift key again so that can kind of snap do that second layer here the outgoing animation and if everything goes well let's just play this back you'll see that we have a nice animation of that framing coming in now we are going to add tons of more elements here in this framing so that's why i'm not going to link it yet to the tracking information but what i'm going to do is group this actually so that i can link the group to that tracking information and work in that group to add some more elements in it so select these two layers here right click on them and say pre-compose give that a name for example the interface and press ok make sure that it says move all attributes into a new composition press ok and now you can see that these two layers here are in one layer and this is actually a new composition or a group that we have just created so let's double click on that group it's right here and we can work now solely on this interface so let's add like another framing to it i'm going to select frame number five take again the in animation and the out animation like so hold down your control key by the way to select multiple clips in here drag them to your composition like so and just move them a little bit more to that side here and it is okay that they are not as long as the other one because this one here 
might come in a little bit later. And perhaps we might want to change the scale a bit of that. So with that layer selected here, I'm going to press the S key on my keyboard, which stands for the scale, and that will open up that property in here. So let's increase that in a tiny bit, like so. And I kind of want to make sure that also that second animation here has the same scale value to it. So select that scale in here, hit the Control C on your keyboard to copy that value, or Command C for the Mac users, and then select that second layer here, and press Control V to paste that onto it, and that will have that same scale information as well. So we have already a very unique kind of framing here, so that's pretty cool. The next thing that we're going to do is add kind of a background to it. So I'm going to close the frames in here and go through the grids. And I have found this pretty cool grid here, the incoming grid. Drag the in and the out here to your composition here, and I'll just drag that to the left side. And this time we do need that loop, so let's drag that one in as well. That's going to sit in middle here. So we have the grid coming in here, like so. Of course, this grid is a bit too big, so again, I want to select one of those layers, hit the S key, scale that down so that it kind of fits here in that framing, like so. Select that scale, hit Ctrl C, select this, and select the other two grid layers here as well, and hit Ctrl V to paste that scale property to it. So we have something like this now, a very nice looking interface board. So that is pretty cool. All right, guys, I'm going to dress this a little bit more here with a couple of things. We have some code in here as well. Just drag that into it. Position that anywhere you want. Make sure that it's always trimmed. You can kind of just keep on doing this. Drag any kind of element to that interface to design whatever that you want. All right, guys, this right here is my interface design. Let's go back now to Dangerous Janic Decomposition here where you can now see that entire group here with that interface. And let's link it now to his wristband. The first thing I want to do is make sure that the null object here is in a 3D space, and also that group here is also in a 3D space. And I can just do that by enabling here this little box that I've just clicked, and that way I'm telling, hey, this is a 3D object. And we're going to need that so that we can rotate this object in a 3D space to kind of match it with the same position as Janik. So once we've done that, I can just select this layer and hit the R key on my keyboard, which stands for the rotation. And now you can see that we have an X, Y, and Z rotation. So just move these values around and kind of make sure that it fits within the scene. Something like this might be okay. Let's drag that to the correct position as well. And once that is done, we're going to link this group to the tracking information. And we can do that from the parent tool right here, which you can drag to this wristband tracking. Let go, and now you can see here on the right side that it is now parented or linked to this null object or that tracking information. And if we are going to play this back, you will see that this layer is perfectly on that wristband like so. And always make sure that with your interface that, you know, Janik here is pushing some buttons here, that they are on the correct position. Like, for example, right here, he's pressing this, uh, this circle. It's not really in the correct place. So I'm going to double click here on my group again and kind of move this circle a bit to that site. Let's go back to Dangerous Janik. This looks a lot better. And uh, while doing that, make sure that you are copying that transform information to the in animation as well, else it will kind of jump as you can see here, because it still has that old position here. And now you'll see that everything is kind of in place. And at this point here, it kind of like slides down. And I have found this pretty cool arrow animation right here, and I actually want to rotate that because he is sliding down at this point right here. So I'm going to double click again on that interface and rotate that like so, about 90 degree. Position that right. Let's go back here to Dangerous Janik and see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Might want to offset it a little bit more to the right side. And now it is in a correct position. Look at that. Looking great. Now once Janik is going to press that button right here, we actually want to bump that a little bit so that it looks like he's really actually pressing that button. So again, double click on your interface and select your circle animation out because we are on that point right here of that circle. Hit the S key on your keyboard to open up the scale and create a keyframe for that scale property. And that way we can animate the scale. Go a couple of frames forward, you can hold down the control key on your keyboard and just press the arrow key to the right side now. One, two, three, four, or something like that. Increase that scale like that and go a couple of frames forward again and decrease that scale. And you can kind of see that we have this bump if we are going to play this back like so. And this is kind of that animation as Janik is pressing that button. 
That's pretty cool. But you know what? As he is pressing that button, he's also enabling something. So we are going to change the color as well of this circle button. So again, double click on your interface and I'm going to head over to the effects and presets right here. If you can't see that, just head over to the window and select the effects and presets. It's somewhere right here, effects and presets. So I'm going to search in here for the HLS and that will bring up the color balance. Drag that effect onto circle number 12 out, which we are doing that animation on. And that should pop open your effects controls. And this kind of works the same as in Premiere Pro. You have your effects controls where you can change the effects properties. And with this U right here on top, we can kind of just change the color of that circle as you can see. But we are going to animate that. We can do that from here, but we can also open up this layer even more. Open up the effects, open up the color balance and create a keyframe for you just on a point where he's kind of pressing that button so that it's somewhere right here. Enable the animation that will create a keyframe for it. Go a couple of frames forward and just kind of change that U to whatever you want. For example, green, which is pretty cool because he's enabling that, which is now pretty obvious that it turns green. And look at that. All right, guys, if you want to make sure that all of these elements are a little bit more prominent in the shot, then you can also go into the effects controls and just search for the glow effects right here and drag the stylized glow on that entire group. And you can see it will kind of glow up a little bit more, making it more prominent. All right, this looks pretty awesome, guys. Now, guys, in the beginning, I said that I had a little surprise for you guys. Uh, let me just reveal that surprise right now. As you know, we are always giving away the project file for free, which you can download from the description below. And normally when we are featuring a paid product, which is the interface from Rocket Stock here, we are not allowed to share anything of that. But Rocket Stock told me, hey, Jordi, whatever you are using today in your tutorial, well, just... Well, just put it in your project file and make it available for anyone to download. So everything that you are seeing here today, guys, you can actually download all of those elements, the entire project file for free from the description below. And that way you can kind of play around with these sample elements and create or recreate the scene that we are doing right now. So that is pretty exciting, guys. Thank you so much, Rocket Stock, for that. Let's continue with the tutorial because the next thing we are going to do is kind of enable now this radar here on his eyes and also here this radar on his wristband again. So we're going to create a second tracking. Once that the interface here is gone, we can go over to his eyes by selecting that layer, opening up the tracker here on the right side, click the track motion. I'm going to go a little bit faster now through this because you guys know how it works. And I'm actually going to stack this eyebrow here on top because if we would track his eyes and every time that he blimps, then this tracking point will kind of go wild there. And again, I want to select the rotation and also the scale this time because Jenning is going to walk forward and there's going to be like a little bit of difference here in the scaling as well because Jenning is going to come closer and further away as well from the camera. So I'm going to select the outer side here of his eyebrow, perhaps make this inner square a little bit smaller like that, and the outer square a little bigger. All right, this looks pretty good, I guess. Let's try it out. Let's drag this, press the play button, but make sure that you are keeping an eye on those two tracking points. All right, we have tracked the entire thing. Look at all those things. Janik really can't walk straight. Look at that. His head is just moving around all the time. That is actually good. That means he is looking around at his enemies. So again, head over to the menu here on top, say layer, new, null object. Give that a name, for example, his eyes, tracking, or actually just one eye, doesn't matter. Go into the edit target here of the tracker and this time select the layer eyes, tracking, press OK and say apply, X and Y, OK. So that null object now is on his eyes. And what we're going to do now is go back into the project panel right here. And I'm going to go into the circles of the interface back and select circle number six, which was pretty cool, actually. Drag that into the composition, kind of move these clips here or, or layers to the right side. And let's see at which point that they have to start right here. So let's move that in animation to it. That loop is right here. And then the outgoing animation right here. And to make it ourselves a bit more convenient, also here, select all of these layers, right click and say pre-comp. This is going to be the eye grader. Move it a little bit forward. And let's now also map that to his eye so we can kind of just decrease that size of that group here. Position it over his eye like that. Make sure that we have the 3D as well enabled here. The same thing goes for the tracking layer as well. And once we've got 
the circle in place, we can parent that with the whip to the ice tracking. Now, if you believe that the scale was still a bit too much, then don't worry too much. You can uh, decrease that scale or reposition it if you want. So it will always remember to keep it linked to that tracking. So you can make adjustments at any time. And also here, I'm going to go to the effects and presets and add that glow effect to the iterator like that. So it's a bit more prominent, as you can see. So it's actually sticking up pretty good to his eye. Look at that. So let's have a look at what we have already here. Jennings is coming in, he presses this button, an interface comes out of it and he enables his radar. So it's following his eye here as well. And the next thing what we're gonna do is kinda add this radar here on top of his uh, wristband. And this is going to work the exact same way as we've done before. So I'm going to go very quickly over this, select that layer, open up the tracker, say track motion, and I'm also gonna say rotation and the scale. Move these two tracking points to a very contrasty point that we have and hit play all right the tracking has been done head over to layer and say new null object name this layer the wrist raider tracking whatever say edit target select the wrist raider tracking press ok and say apply and press ok and we have a very nice radar here inside the rocket stock interface back right here and it's called the radar number four if I'm looking here on my paper, um, drag these three here again into your composition, kind of align that together with the tracking like that. We have an incoming animation, a loop, and an outgoing animation. Like so make sure that they are aligned correctly. Something like this would be okay. Select all of them, right click, pre-compose, name this radar, enable the 3D space, press the R key on your keyboard and just kind of rotate this around so that it sits on the correct place like that and you might want to reposition it as well just drag that onto that wristband like so and perhaps we might want to decrease the scale of that too once that is done make sure that you also enable the 3d 4d tracking here and then just parent that to the wrist tracking layer there we go and now that radar is also attached to his wrist but we're going to add some more 3d effect to it and that can be very easily done by actually duplicating this layer with that layer selected just press the Control d key on your keyboard to make a duplication and at a certain point here in time we're going to animate the position of that second layer just hit the p key on your keyboard to open up the position for that uh, layer go a little bit forward in time and just drag here the z axis a little bit higher like that now that layer will kind of open up, showing itself more like a 3D object. Looks pretty cool. And if you want so, you can give one of these layers a different color by going into the effects controls again. Where is it? Effects and presets. Search for that HLS. Color balance. Drag that onto that radar layer right here and just offset that U a tiny bit. Look at this, guys. Pretty awesome. The last thing that we want to do to give it that final touch is to enable motion blur because Jennig is moving around as well. You can kind of see some motion blur here as he is moving around his head. So we want to make sure that that same motion blur also applies to the elements that we have applied. Very easy. Like we have done with the 3D space, we are also just going to enable motion blur inside After Effects. Just hit this checkbox right here all the way on the left side and you want to enable that for all the layers that have these uh, sci-fi elements into it. And once that is done, we are going to enable the global motion blur from the button here on top. And now you will kind of see here as Jennings is moving his face around that also that will kind of have some motion blur to it. It will render a little bit slower now with that motion blur, but the results are pretty cool. All right, guys, let's have a final look to it. Jennings here, look how tough he is coming in there. Now he's not making goof of himself anymore with that inner face on him. And he has his nice radar. Look at that. With just a few drags and clicks, we have created our own sci-fi scene. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Sorry that this is a pretty long tutorial, but I hope that you do learn something new in here, how tracking works, and make sure to download the project file as well so that you can actually use these elements that you've seen in this tutorial. Thank you again for watching, and as always, stay creative.